Hello everyone and welcome back. We're just six days away right now from the Minnesota deer hunting opener. As you guys know every year I try to make jerky before uh, deer hunting. I wasn't really sure if I was going to have time <laughs> to do it this year. I just was up to the new house over the weekend here and I just got home and uh, I wanted to get this in, get it into the brine tonight, throw it in the smoker before work tomorrow and then uh, Hopefully tomorrow night, I don't know, a little bit of it might be done, but by Tuesday night most of it will be. Wednesday, all of it will be. And by the time I head up to deer camp on Friday, I'll have some jars full of jerky. I've used up all of my venison from last year, so I had to go up to the store and buy some beef. This is Eye of Round. It's got a little fat in there, which is fine because this is going to get all eaten up within the first few days. I kind of like jerky that has fat in it to be honest. I like it when you use like a chuck roast and it's real fatty. I mean it doesn't last a long time but my jerky never does because it always gets eaten right up. I'm going to make sure that I have enough so we have a couple jars at the tent. I will give uh, my dad a jar over at the folks cabin for him and Wayne. Uh, I want to get uh, Melissa a jar because she really likes it also. Should be plenty for everybody. I do make sure I clean up some of this fat that's on the outside. That's just a little bit too much there. It's okay if it marbles a little bit through it if you're going to eat it right away, but the fat on the outside will just collect the smoke and be kind of gross. These roasts are so nice to work with because I can just figure about how wide I want the strip to be. Just cut it. Do it again on the next one. You really get some uniform chunks doing it like this. Now it's time for me to get the brine ready. I'm trying to keep this video shorter because I do the same video on one of the two channels almost every single year. But first we have to put in a half a cup of soy sauce. And I've said it in the past, don't double up on the recipe. For some reason, it does not turn out, yeah, I mean, it's still good, but it's not, it doesn't seem the same to me. Half a cup of Worcestershire sauce. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Two teaspoons of onion powder. Two teaspoons of MSG. Or accent, whatever you want to call it, that's all it is. You can add this or don't add it, it's up to you. People complain that it's not very healthy, but at the same time it adds depth and a more savory taste to it. And I only make jerky once a year, usually once or twice, so it's not going to kill anybody. And then one teaspoon of liquid smoke. And then just mix it up real good. I've told this story probably every time. When the kids were little, I would set them on the counter in their diapers. And, uh, you know, whatever age, as they, when they were old enough, and they would mix up the brine. So that was one of Sarah's favorite things to do was to mix up the jerky brine. Now we're just going to start adding chunks of meat. Once you get your meat in there you want enough so it looks just like this. It doesn't have to completely cover the meat, it doesn't matter. Just like this is perfect. Alright, I'll come back after I get all these in the brine. 
And the last one I forgot to add a half a teaspoon of pepper. <laughs> oh well, nobody will ever know the difference. So I have all the eye of round into brine right now and I actually think that that's going to pretty much fill up that smoker. I'm really going to have to run it tight in there I think. But I have this, I bought every one that they had and then I bought a chuck roast and when Melissa and I, just before we left Louisiana, we went to the Cajun village, to the Cajun shop and they had a jerky mix called Targill Jerky Mix. They also had Targill uh, meatloaf mix and some stuff. Anyway, we jambalaya, I think. No, there was boudin. Anyway, I bought it, but it has no directions on it at all, so it must be a dry, a dry type. So anyway, I'm just going to cut a little bit of this up. I'm going to season it, put it into a Ziploc, throw it in the fridge overnight, just like I do with the uh, brine. And if I have room, I'm going to throw that on there also, just to see what it tastes like. I have no idea. I've been doing this same jerky recipe for over 30 years now, so I think it's safe to uh, once in a while try something different and just see how it is. So here's that jerky mix. It's got salt, black pepper, garlic, red pepper, onion, and smoke powder. So it has red pepper in it though, and I'm not big on anything hot, but we'll just give this a try on this small batch and just see how it is. I don't have like a empty salt shaker or something to put this on even, so I'm just going to have to do it like this. I just tasted a little bit of it and it isn't like super hot or anything, so a little bit salty so I'm going to be a little thinner with it on this side but it's going to sit in a Ziploc bag and then the juices are going to come out of this so it'll be partially diluted. All right all these are ready to go into the refrigerator. One of my favorite things about making jerky you get to fry up all the unhealthy stuff. All the meat is brining in the fridge, all the racks have been washed, my dishes are done, and I need to jump in the shower because it's almost 10 o'clock at night, so I'll see you guys in the morning. I have all the jerky in there, I've got uh, apple chips for the first tray, I think I'll do cherry after that. It's about a quarter after six in the morning and I've got to get to work, so come back and check this later. Hopefully everything will be doing just fine. Well, I'm back here now. It's about, uh, I don't know, seven hours later, seven or eight hours later. I just switched some of these racks out. It's running at about 100 degrees. Well, it's been in here now almost 13 hours. I'm done running any smoke on here. I ran just the two, the two batches, and they were full. Uh, if you run, you know, much more, uh, you you get that chalky taste on the outside because it's uh, the smoke just kind of sticks to the outside then. So now it's just a waiting game, just kind of dehydrating it out, and that'll take a while. I'm flipping all the pieces right now. I only do that one time. 
If this would have been, you know, cut thinner, a lot of it would have been done tonight. But this I all cut about a quarter inch thick, so it'll be nice and chewy and really good. The left side, which is the one that had the uh, wood chips in it, which I keep on high, that side of the, the whole uh, smoker gets done kind of first. So now once I pull that off, I'm going to turn this one down to low, like this one is, and I'm going to crank this one all the way up to high. And as it dries out, you really have to watch the temperature because when it's real wet, the temperature stays low, but as the moisture goes away, that temperature rises faster. So I'll watch it close until bedtime. I like it better when it's below freezing because then I shut it off and it all freezes, start it up in the morning. But I'll probably leave it going tonight, but I'll leave it going at a lower temperature. But for right now, I want to keep it right around that 100 to 105. It's about five minutes after five, and the first few pieces I got to take out of the smoker, the rest of them will have to wait until after work. So when I check these, I just come in and I push on them, and if they're not squishy, like this one has a little bit of squish, they stay. If they're hard, then they're done. And then once you put them into a sealed jar, or even in this thing here, the moisture will um, distribute between all of them. So if one is super dry and brittle, and another one isn't, uh, the one that's super brittle will it'll soften up a little bit and then pretty soon they're all exactly the same all right well it's about 36 hours since we put it in here I'm going to pull the last of this out. Everything is finally done. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I did try some of that stuff that just had the tar gill on it dry. Uh, I didn't much care for it. Um, it seemed boring, but I'm sure I just didn't do something right. Like maybe I needed to put more on it. I'm so used to something that's been brined like this that has so much flavor in it. And that one just didn't seem to have it for me, but like I said, I probably did something wrong. I will see you guys on the next video.